Predators, what comes to mind? Big, fierce, dangerous animals with sharp teeth and long claws? Predators actually come in all shapes and sizes. Many are quite small. Songbirds, toads, and even insects and spiders may be predators. A predator is any animal that kills and eats another kind of animal. The food of predators, which we call prey, includes animals of all kinds, too. Wolves eat caribou. Eagles eat fish. Lots of predators eat little bugs and earthworms. Predators even eat other predators. Hawks eat snakes. Big fish eat little fish. In nature, a law says, eat and be eaten. Some predators eat plants, too. Raccoons, for example, eat fruits such as wild grapes as well as fish. We call animals like raccoons omnivores. Or means to eat. Omni means everything. Omnivores eat everything. Omnivores are predators on a part-time basis. Predators like lions, which eat only meat, are called carnivores. Animals like caterpillars and mice, which eat only plants, are herbivores. Predators eat lots of herbivores, because herbivores are the most common kind of animal. As we watch a mink capture a muskrat, the mink might seem cruel to us. For the mink, predation. The act of capturing and eating prey is the only way to get food. And for nature, predation is an important tool for keeping balance. When nature is in balance, no kind of animal is too abundant or too scarce to the benefit of all. Occasionally, nature does get out of balance. This area has an unusually high number of jackrabbits. Someday, all these jackrabbits may create problems for themselves, their habitat, and other animals in the area. When a species gets out of balance like this, biologists say the species exceeds the land's carrying capacity. The land cannot support, that is, carry, this many jackrabbits because they will eat plants faster than the plants can grow. Eventually, the jackrabbits will run out of food. Meanwhile, other animals depending on plants for food and shelter, such as these sparrows, will leave. Then the natural world becomes even more unbalanced because the sparrows will not contribute their part to the ecosystem. If the plants all get eaten, the land may erode and become nearly empty of life. Without predators to help control populations, the world would be a much different place. In studying nature's balance, we should be aware that animals can reproduce very quickly, especially prey species. A mathematician once calculated that if all generations from a single pair of robins survived and reproduced, in just 10 years, there would be 4 million birds. Could you imagine that many robins hunting worms in your yard? Insects can multiply hundreds of times faster than robins. Hungry predators, including
including birds, perform valuable services by controlling pests such as tent caterpillars and countless other animals. Even though predators are good at reducing populations, they rarely cause their prey to become endangered or extinct. Predators mostly eat surplus animals, extra ones not necessary for the species to survive. To understand why, we might think of predators as smart shoppers, always looking for a bargain. They want the most food for the least cost. Weasels sometimes hunt white-footed mice, which usually are not hard for weasels to catch. But if the mice become scarce, the weasels have to spend more time and energy looking for them than the mice are worth. So the weasels hunt other kinds of prey, or even move to another place. This allows the few remaining mice to reproduce without predation and quickly rebuild their population. When the mice are again abundant, the weasels will be lured back by mouse hunting bargains. The populations of mice and weasels go up and down all the time. The animals might never balance each other exactly, but their populations stay in a narrow range. The balance of nature is like a pendulum from an old-style clock. The pendulum first swings one way a little, then swings back the other way. The pendulum never stays in the same place, but it does not get far out of line either. The predator-prey balance works to keep not only prey species in line, but controls predators too. If coyotes hunt jackrabbits where the population has exploded, the coyotes might raise lots of young because of all the food the jackrabbits provide. But someday, the coyotes might eat all the jackrabbits except for a few smart ones they can't catch. When the jackrabbits become scarce, so will the coyotes. They will not have food. The number of predators in an area depends on the amount of prey available. If the coyotes move to a new territory, they may find lots of food again, perhaps quail. There might be hundreds of quail for every coyote. Prey species usually outnumber predators by far. Herbivores, such as quail, may be surrounded by food. The quail themselves are only scattered here and there. They provide enough meat for just a few coyotes. Animal for animal and pound for pound, in the balance of nature, prey species always outnumber and outweigh the predators. Predators have helped maintaining the balance of nature. Competition plays a role too. For example, bluebirds nest in holes in trees. But so do dozens of other kinds of animals such as flying squirrels. Nest holes are usually in short supply and competition for them helps control populations of bluebirds and of other animals that want them too. Disease also helps maintain balance. Disease spreads easily among overpopulated animals because they are crowded and perhaps weak from hunger. 
Waterfowl are especially affected by diseases found in crowded lakes. Mammals, such as raccoons, may be stricken with rabies and a number of other illnesses. One way or another, nature keeps her world in balance. Where do people fit into nature's balance? People are omnivores. We eat all sorts of foods, including meat. Our prey includes chickens, cattle, and fish. As predators, we are skilled and fierce. Very rarely does another animal kill a human. People affect nature's balance in many ways. For example, in places we have eliminated or gotten rid of big predators such as bears, wolves, and mountain lions. These once were important predators of deer. Deer populations today can grow without control and create highway hazards and problems for farmers. Human hunters now serve as a major predator of deer to help balance their numbers. Also, our fields of corn and other crops create monocultures over large areas. In a monoculture, only one kind of plant grows. In a natural area, there may be hundreds. This natural diversity or variety allows balance. There are homes for predators and prey alike. In a monoculture crop field, farmers must fertilize and spray to overcome pests and other problems in the unbalanced system. Also, some scientists believe there may soon be too many people. Humans will exceed the Earth's carrying capacity. No natural predators control our population. We should be aware of this and search for solutions. During a year, in nature, billions of insects, birds, fish, and other animals are born. To provide room for them, billions of others must die. There is a limit to what the Earth can support. Predators help keep nature in balance. The predator-prey relationship is complex. Predators control all prey species, but rarely take too many. Prey species also control predators, because without prey, there can be no predators. Predators come in all sizes and shapes. They are not cruel or bloodthirsty. They are a very exciting, important part of the natural world.